Okay, today I'm going to be demonstrating how I make a ring jug. And this could be very interesting because I've never seen a ring jug made. When I worked for Mr. Gordy in the pottery shop there in Bartow County, he never made a ring jug while I worked there. And so this is how I make a ring jug. First of all, I weigh the clay. This is three and a half pounds. And once the clay is centered, I open the ball up, but instead of leaving a bottom like I would in a pitcher or a jug, I open the clay all the way to the wheel head and pull it out to the edge in a ring. And you have to kind of do that slowly so that you don't break it loose from the wheel. And so, Then, by using my forefinger, I open the clay up down to within, oh, probably three sixteenths of the wheel head. And I'll measure it to make sure that I've got it about right using a needle tool. So, I see that I can go a little bit deeper with that. And that should be about right. Right there. Oh, yes, that's good. Okay. That's how thick it is on the bottom. And then I bring the inside wall up. Being careful not to disturb this one out here too much. use this sponge to help uh, allow the clay to glide through. Sometimes the friction that's caused by your hands drying off will cause it to grab a little bit and you don't want anything to hinder this coming up. And after a certain point, when I get the wall to the thickness that I want it, and I'll do that by using one of these shaping ribs here, and then I'll undercut it here. Notice I've slowed the wheel down. And the reason for that is because I'm going to need now, I'm, I'm using the sponge to go in and remove any excess water that I've left inside. And by using the sponge and keeping it kind of wet, I'm gonna pull the outer wall inward. And the reason I've slowed the wheel down so much, and you can see it already, is the centrifugal force is hindering me from pushing this wall in too much. So I go in and bring the inside wall over close to it and then slowing the wheel down even more. I will try to get those two walls to bond together without dipping and causing uh, an area that would be weak. about got it. Okay, there. There you are. Now I've got it where I want it. And I'm going to mark the place where the two walls join together here. And you'll see why I've marked that a little bit later. And I'm going to dry all the excess water out 
from outside and inside. And now I can use the cutting wire to cut it off from the wheel. I usually run the wire through it two times. That helps get rid of some of the slurry that's under there that would cause it to weld back. Now, in the normal process, I have to let this dry enough to go back and work with it. But to speed things up, I have gone ahead and made five other ring jugs that I'll be using in the process. So I'll set this one aside and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now this is a, a ball made from uh, a little softer clay than I normally use to make a piece of pottery. And the reason it's softer is because I'm going to make uh, a strip of clay here. And normally I do this, I'll make six or eight green jugs at a time. And I'll do this process once for all six or eight of them using a strip for each, for each one. But okay, and that should be about the right uh, the right uh, diameter to allow me enough clay to seal that seam where I pull the two two walls together at the top. And so you cut that off, lay it aside. And then I'll lift this up and I'll put the ring jug back on and I'll do the next step. Okay, okay, we are ready now to bond the, the two walls together where I pull this one up and this one over and I pushed them together. I just made sure that they were snugged together but there's not re really anything to hold them together. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and trim out a little trough. And then I'll take this piece of clay that I have cut out of that uh, soft clay that I was turning and I'll put it around as smoothly as possible and it will become the glue so to speak that will hold the two uh, two walls together to keep it from cracking. Cracking uh, is something that's uh, very easy to happen when you when you're working on a ring jug because you pull two sides together, you forced them together, but you haven't given them very much to hold them together. Okay, and then I'll take a shaping rib and I'll try to make that less noticeable here. Now, it wouldn't be uncommon for me to come back and do a little bit of trimming on this after it dries a little to smooth it out. A little bit more smoothing right here. Okay, now that will work until I get ready to smooth it. Now, uh, if you'll notice, I have punched a hole in each one of the ring jugs that I'll be using here in the demonstration. And the reason for that is because as it dries, the clay shrinks. There's about a 13% shrink factor in my clay. And when it dries, if you don't put a hole in it, it will trap that air inside and it will crack it right where you joined it together. So I have to have a hole in everything, but later you'll see that that hole will be covered. Okay, now the next step, you know, I, I took the rope of clay that I, I took off the cylinder to seal the top and the part that was sitting next to the wheel, the bottom part, now I have to turn it over 
and smooth that bottom part so that it'll be it, it'll be the proper shape when I'm finished. And so use the trimming tool. If you notice, I'm holding the uh, <clears throat> trimmings up so that they don't stick back to the jug as the wheel turns. If they do, then you have to stop and detach them before you can go on. So there's the, uh, there's the bottom that's smoothed out now. And as you can see, you're beginning to have the perfect. Now there's a spot here. I'm gonna have to go back and fill in a little bit there, but that's not unusual. And you can see how it's beginning to take shape now. And of course, there's the hole that's letting the air out. And so the next step is going to be to put the feet on it so that it'll stand up. And so I'll pull one out to do that with. Okay, so we're ready now to attach the feet. I've made uh, some balls and I just kind of do this by sight. Uh, what I think is the proper amount to make a footing. And if I start to make one, if it's too small, I make the balls bigger. If it's too big, I'll make them small. But in order to get those placed right, I will need to score the jug to where I know the top is going to go. This is where the spout will go. And then I'll come straight across from that. And I'll give it that right there. And then this is where we'll be putting the feet. Right there. And I just place these on there and shape them till I think they look like a foot. And so far it's worked out that they do. All right, and then I'm going to turn it over. And I'll repeat, repeat that process on this side. And see, I'm looking also here, I'm looking to see if I'm the same distance over. And you can see that's pretty well divided. And you can cheat a little bit when you get to the top, not a lot, but you can move the spout a little to the left or the right and still use the hole that's been punched in it to let the air out.
and that will give it a good sturdy foundation and so the next step will be to turn a spout and apply the spout now the next step is to make the spouts of course the spouts are turned to and normally when i make ring jugs i'll make six or eight at a time and I'll turn the spouts and do everything kind of on the semi line. I'll turn all the spouts at once. And the spout will wind up having a cork in it and so I use this cork to <coughs> gauge uh, the size that I want the spout, the opening in the spout to be. And then I cut that off, set it aside. And the next step is to add the spout to the jug. Okay, so the next step is to add the spout. And I don't really measure the, the height of the spout. So some of the ring jugs have a little taller and some have a little shorter. Uh, they all look okay. And now you need to make sure that you get the need to make sure you get it lined up this way and you also need to make sure that you've got it lined up this way because there's going to be two handles that go here and you want it to be relatively close so i've got it marked by adding a little water to this uh, i'm able to see where i need to cut the hole so I'll go in here now and I'll cut that out with a little knife. And then I'm going to take a, my wet finger and kind of take the rough edges off of this. Like so. And then come in here and attach that okay i'm going to reach right over here and get a tool to help me seal this down and what i'll do here is i'll gonna seal that down real good and try to leave it to where there's not any pockets because I'm going to put soft clay around here and work it, work the clay in so that it gives it a real finished look and it looks like the spout actually is growing out of the jug instead of has been added onto the jug. So I'll take this real soft clay here and kind of roll it out and then I'll start around like this okay and then I'll blend that in now I'll go back <coughs> later and uh, sponge everything and when you see little fingerprints or something that looks like an imperfection you have to remember that i go back and smooth all that out before i put it in the keel okay beginning to look like it's just an extension instead of an addition. 
Okay. I'm also going to, uh, since I've got the clay ready, I'm going to go ahead and add the handles to this in this step. So get it real smooth before I put the handles on. Okay. Now, I will say this getting the handles symmetrical when you put two handles on a piece of pottery is not always easy uh, and you'll see that when i stick these pieces of clay up there you probably say hey you need to move that one a little bit and remember this whatever you see i see i even saw that drop of dirty clay water get on my clean shirt Okay, so there's one handle, there's two handles. Let's see how good our eyes are here. Work that clay in real good because just like, uh, just like the uh, spout needs to look like it grew out of the jug. The handle needs to look the same way. It all needs to look like it's part of it. And I don't pinch the clay off yet because I want to I want to look and see what I need to do to it <laughs> looks good so far but we'll see okay right here we got a nail I'll work this clay in here to give it strength. You just don't ever want your handles to have any cracks uh, that would appear to be a flaw in the finished product. You want to make sure that everything is smooth. And so I'll go in here and I'll add a little piece of, uh, of soft clay in there to fill that gap in. It's going to have to come in right about right there, I think. Not bad. go back and add a little piece of clay down here too. I use the nail to go in and, and make a little trough there so that that little V that's formed doesn't become an air pocket 
because air pockets and clay don't work too well together in the keel. So, Okay, now we're ready for the next step. There's only a couple of things left now, and uh, one is I've rolled out a little bottle of clay here that I think is big enough to make the, uh, the cap that'll go on the top, and when I'm finished, we'll show you one that's completed the finished product that's been uh, glazed and burned and, and has the cap. And since this is about uh, two inches or an inch and three quarters, I'll make this two and a quarter inches. And when it shrinks down, they'll be just about right to fit. And that's where, you know, I told you that I was using a cork uh, to measure the opening. And, and this right here will be what sits on top of that cork and it will, it will be glued to it. And this needs to be two and a quarter inches across. So let's see the little yard, the ruler here, and it says, well, it's two and a quarter. So that should be good. And I set this, this aside. This will be fired separately, of course. And before we, we break away this time and show you the completed one, I'm going to go ahead and do the claws on the feet while they're still wet. And so that will give it a little bit of a look, you know. So, can I go back one more time and make sure that it's straight up? And that one is ready to go through the drying process. Okay, so the finished product, here's the ring jug finished. You can see all the different pieces here. And of course I told you about the cork and this being glued to the top. Uh, I use these to kind of help level it because in the kill sometimes they'll get a little crooked. But that is the way I make ring jugs.